Dave Palumbo here with an RX Muscle rant. Today we're going to talk ketogenic diet, something that I am uh, that's very true and close to my heart. I've been talking about it for 25 years. Uh, everyone probably knows by now my Dave Palumbo or Palumbo's ketogenic diet, as people refer to it as, uh, which is a high protein, moderate fat, you know, low carb diet. Now it's very important that we start off this this discussion explaining what a ketogenic diet is or explaining what the word ketogenic means okay all the term ketogenic keto for short means is that your brain which usually uses glucose carbohydrates as a fuel source will no longer use glucose as a fuel source it will switch its metabolism and start using fats and the specific type of fats that it uses are ketones okay the body can convert these fats into ketone bodies and they are used for fuel specifically for the brain and, and the muscles and stuff like that. Now, when your brain has decided to not use glucose anymore, and why would it do that? Well, because we've restricted carbs. Now, here's the thing. If you do one day of, of zero carbs, you're not in ketosis. Your brain will not switch its metabolism. It takes 72 hours, three days of carbohydrate restriction. Okay, that means like virtually no carbs in your diet, no, except maybe trace amounts, probably usually under 40 grams. I tell people no direct sources of starchy carbs, maybe some vegetables and whatever is indirectly in your food you're eating. That will force your brain to say, hey, I give up. I'm not, I can't use glucose. There's just not enough around. You know, I can't generate it quick enough from gluconeogenesis. I am going to switch into ketosis, meaning the, the brain is now going to switch into using fats as a fuel source. Now, the wonderful thing about that is that when you're using fats as a fuel source, you pretty much have an unlimited supply of this stuff, right? Because you have a lot of stored body fat. You know, unless you have 0% body fat, which very few people do, okay? You have a good supply of it. And when your brain is not dipping into the sugar pool that's going, traveling in your bloodstream, blood sugar is stable, okay? So if your brain has fuel whenever it needs it in the form of fats, okay, ketones, and blood sugar is stable, you're going to feel good all the time. You're not going to have cravings. You're not going to be irritable. You're not going to be low energy, okay? because the fact that we've stabilized the energy supply to the brain. Okay, that is the premise of a ketogenic diet. Now, there are different types of ketogenic diets. Probably the first ketogenic diet to ever be popularized was by Dr. Atkins. It's called the Atkins diet. He basically just said, don't eat carbs, eat whatever you want. So invariably people ate mostly junk, you know, junky sources of protein and, and, and fats. They were doing butter and bacon and ham and all kinds of, you know, you know, steak and all kinds of, you know, foods that creams, heavy creams that, that, you know, are not really conducive to a performance athlete, okay, or to good health, but that the diet worked because there was no carbohydrates being consumed. So insulin levels were super low, okay? The brain went into ketosis, the person felt good. And let's face it, you really can't eat a lot of protein fat. It kind of, fats fill you up pretty quickly. So people lost weight. It was an undisciplined diet, okay? I kind of jumped into that equation around that time, and I said, you know what? Athletes, okay, specifically bodybuilders, myself, which is what I was the first person who I experimented on, they need a high-protein diet. Why? Because we break down muscle tissue in the gym. A lot of it. And the bigger you are, the more you break down. So if you don't provide the raw materials to repair muscle, okay, you're not going to grow and you're going to lose muscle on a diet, okay? So I realized that you can't have, you know, whereas Atkins probably had it, it skewed more in favor of the fats, I realized that that was not going to bode well for the bodybuilder, okay? Likewise, I felt that it wasn't, that he wasn't addressing this, the different type of fats that your body requires, your monounsaturates, which would be most of your fatty intake, okay, because those are the good burning fats, they're also very heart healthy. Your essential fatty acids, which are your polyunsaturated fats, your omega-3s and 6s, which are, they're essential, they're necessary. You cannot consume these. I mean, you cannot synthesize these on your own. You must consume them. So they're not debatable whether you can or cannot have them. Probably on the Atkins diet, you got no essential fatty acids in your diet because they were, they're not in really in bacon and, and heavy cream and butter. So unless you're you know, doing some grass-fed, but even still, it, it, it's low. So you really have to target, you know, which type of fats you want. And then, of course, some saturated fats, which most people get on uh, the Atkins diet, people got too much of, you know. Now, I don't really believe that too much saturated fat will cause coronary heart disease, but 
um, you know, it's just, I, it's just not good for you. Too much saturated fat acts as a negative partitioning agent, meaning it tells the body, store fat. So you, you, if you eat too much fat, even though it has no effect on insulin, you can still store that fat as fat if you eat an excessive amount of it. Just like protein doesn't very readily convert to fat in the body, you have to eat an enormous amount for it to convert. But if you do eat enough, it can you know, eventually turn into body fat down the road. So my diet was a high protein, moderate fat diet, whereas the Atkins was an undisciplined diet. Then we started to hear recently about this, what we call the medical or the ketogenic, the medical ketogenic diet. They were using this diet to control seizures, um, for cancer patients, because cancer patients, their, their bodies are like to use glucose as a fuel source, cancer cells. So the idea is starve the cancer cells of the glucose, put yourself into a state of ketosis. The cancer cells can't use fat as a fuel source. They can't, they don't oxidize fats well, so that you can inhibit cancer growth. And, it, and it, there's a lot of evidence to show that. And there's a lot of evidence showing that, that it inhibits seizures when your brain is in a state of ketosis. So the medical ketogenic diet was for regular people, really. And so there's no reason to give regular people a super high protein diet. Matter of fact, if you don't exercise and use that protein, a lot of it can be converted into glucose by the liver gluconeogenesis. And that can, you know, that can screw up or take you out of ketosis a little bit. And I think that's where people get confused. They say, oh, the medical ketogenic diet, people say you shouldn't eat high protein because you're gonna come out of, you know, you're not gonna stay in ketosis. Well, that's true if you're not working out, but if you're breaking down muscle five days a week in the gym, you know, doing, car, uh, doing uh, you know, heavy weight training and doing cardio, you need to repair that muscle tissue. A little bit of protein is not gonna cut it. 75 grams of protein a day won't cut it. You'll lose muscle, and you certainly won't build any muscle. So they're, they're, you have to make that distinction. So when a lot of people don't understand the science of what's going on, they just read the rhetoric online, and they say, oh, I'm not in, ke I'm not on, in ketosis if I don't follow this medical ketogenic diet. Well, you're a moron if you think that, <laughs> basically. You're always in ketosis if you're not eating carbohydrates, you know? People always say, oh, the keto stick, should I check my, I said, look, if you're not eating any direct sources of carbs, where is your brain getting the fuel from? You're in ketosis. You'll know when you're in ketosis. It's like someone flipped the light switch. It's like you were in a fog and then you're not in a fog, okay? Because your brain switches its metabolism. So you know when you're in ketosis. I think Brad, Brad Rowe is interviewed by Fuad Abiyad, and he's doing some kind of medical ketogenic diet because he probably doesn't, I don't even know why he's doing it. He's eating low protein or moderate low protein, and he's eating high fat. And I think Fuad asked him something about, you know, you know something, and he said, oh, I'm not doing that bullshit uh, Dave Palumbo ketogenic diet with the seven ounces of protein per meal. Now, are you doing true keto, like, you know, 30% protein? protein. Not, not, not the Dave Colombo bullshit where you're eating seven ounces of protein and whatever. I yeah. was getting, I was getting, especially during the bulking phase, I was getting about 75% of my calories from fats. The way he said it with the disdain in his voice, you would have thought that I insulted his intelligence. I insulted his religion or something like that. Like, like, like the ketogenic diet he's following is a religious, you know, doctrine that I actually violated in some way. <laughs> you know, but to think to to say that is just showing his true ignorance. Because as a bodybuilder, you need high protein, okay, if you're going to recover, okay. I don't know why he's doing a low. Why anyone, any bodybuilder, would ever consider doing a low protein diet, okay? It, it's it's against everything that we, we need, okay, in, in our bodies. Now, he might have a medical problem that I don't know about, and maybe he can't eat high protein. That, that's something I, I have no, no knowledge of. But it was interesting. I found it kind of peculiar that he, that he kind of dismissed it or dismissed me with such disdain. I don't know why. Maybe he's got a personal thing against me. I don't know. But it was, it was an ignorant statement because he obviously doesn't understand, you know, uh, how the ketogenic diet works. Stone Cold Steve Austin, the WWE wrestler, had come to me because he also – was doing that medical ketogenic diet because he read it online someplace and he, and he wasn't losing any weight. And I said, I said, I said Stone Cold, man, you, you train like a bodybuilder. You know, you're, you're, you're 250, you've got a lot of muscle, you lift heavy weights, you're eating no protein, you're eating like 60 grams of protein a day. He's like, well, I read it's gonna take me out of ketosis if I, if I eat high protein. No, it's not gonna, not if you're using the protein. The key is, are you using the protein that you're eating? So you always must cater a diet for the activity that you're doing. 
If you're a bodybuilder breaking down muscle almost on a daily basis, you need a high protein diet, one to one and a half grams of protein per pound that you weigh. Remember, fat is just merely a fuel source. Okay, now there is the essential fats are used for helping to repair muscle to a certain degree. Um, and a lot of people who eat no fat diets and then switch to a, a higher fat diet, notice they get an anabolic response from it. And I think that's what Brad Rowe referred to. He didn't even realize it. You get an anabolic response because you're so fat deprived that your body actually starts using that, those fats to, to building muscle. Uh, almost, it's almost like you're, you're taking a shot of steroids in a sense. You're giving your body something that it didn't have. But by and far, okay, for bodybuilders, and because there's only a limited amount of macronutrients you can consume and still lose weight, high protein, moderate fat is the way to go. The fats provide the fuel source, the protein repairs the muscle tissue. That's the key. The low to no carbs provides the basis for the brain to switch into ketosis so that the brain is now using fats as a fuel source. Now there's another diet that came out recently and, and Joe Rogan was talking about it on his Instagram called the carnivore diet, which is basically a ketogenic diet. The carnivore diet, however, says all you eat is, 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 is meats. If it doesn't come from an animal, you don't eat it, okay? Which, which I think is foolish because it's almost all saturated fats. Obviously, if you eat some grass-fed beefs and stuff like that, you could theoretically get some, some omega-3 fats in there. But I think that it's, it's very limited and I don't think that you should have to eliminate vegetables, okay, low glycemic vegetables from your diet. So in other words, on my diet, you can eat green beans and spinach and asparagus because they're very low carb. They're not gonna take you out of ketosis. And the greens are, we know, are good for you. They do help alkalinize the body and neutralize some of that acidic waste that all that you know, protein and fat we eat produces. So once again, it's never at the extremes. The carnivore diet works because it's a ketogenic diet and it's probably higher in protein. Okay, but it, it can be an undisciplined diet if you don't sit down and figure out what you're gonna eat. I don't like it because it, it's, too, it's too extreme and it excludes plants. Just like I don't like the vegan diet because the vegans say don't eat any animal source of protein. The extremes are never the right way. The middle is always the correct. We're omnivores. We're supposed to eat plants and, okay, and animal products. It's about the balance of it that makes you healthy and gives you the ability to look good and feel good, okay? It's not mutually exclusive. You don't have to go and eat, you know, uh, go kill a, a woolly mammoth and only eat the woolly mammoth, you know, day and night, okay, to look a certain way. You can have some vegetables with that. You can mix in some, some good, you know, uh, monounsaturated fats coming from like, you know, plants like uh, macadamia nut oil or extra virgin olive oil. These are, these are healthy things that you can add in. It doesn't have to come just from an animal. It's too extreme. I, anyone who doesn't see that something that that extreme is not going to be the right way to do things, and it's certainly not a long-term solution, is, is not seeing the total picture. The total picture is taking all the best ideas from all the diets and incorporating them into one. And I'm not saying you have to do a ketogenic diet, because not everyone has to go zero carbs or very low carbs to lose weight. Some people can eat protein, good fats, and some carbs and lose weight. And that's probably the best diet, if you can do that. But unfortunately, most people don't have a gifted metabolism like that, so they have to eliminate, something has to be an expendable nutrient. And to me, carbohydrates are the obvious choice because when you eliminate carbohydrates, you keep insulin levels low, the brain goes into ketosis, you feel good, okay? And carbs are not an essential nutrient, so you're not missing anything. And guess what, if your body absolutely needed some carbs, it can always convert amino acids into glucose in the liver. It happens all day long. We can't even stop that from happening. We can blunt it a little bit by taking a fiber supplement, but we can't stop that. So the brain and the body, okay, are amino acid driven organisms. Okay, that means that protein is what fuels it. The reason is your body can convert amino acids into glucose. So obviously glucose is not necessary. However, you can't convert glucose into amino acids. It doesn't happen. It would be beautiful if you can do that, but you can't. So our bodies function very well on protein and fats. How much you take in of each is dependent on your activity level. If you're a bodybuilder, if you're an elite athlete, you're gonna have to eat, or you're gonna wanna definitely eat a higher protein, moderate fat diet if you're doing a ketogenic diet. Um, carnivore diet works to extreme. Atkins, undisciplined, okay? Medical ketogenic diet, great for people who are sedentary and don't do anything or your or your your household dog if, if he gets cancer but 
or if you have seizure disorder, but not something that we're going to do as elite athletes. That is the distinction you need to make and understand. Once you get that idea, you'll understand why I like to advocate my ketogenic diet to people. It's, it's, it's logical and it's scientific. I'm Dave Palumbo with another RX Muscle rant.